Maturity Stages of Analytics Descriptive Analytics The first type of analytics we will introduce are descriptive analytics. Although a bit simpler to execute, descriptive analytics should not be underestimated. They provide us a very valuable insight by answering the question, what happened? The main goal of this type of analysis is to explain variances and look for trends in our data. This allows management to evaluate the firm's business performance and take corrective actions when necessary. The application of historical analysis is an example of a technique that can be used broadly and takes different shapes and forms. Frequently, it helps us uncover some of the key drivers of business performance and is often considered as a stepping stone for progressing to more sophisticated analytical techniques. Historical data typically includes an organization's financial and operational metrics, as derived from sources, such as past financial statements, invoices, and operational reports. Here is an example of a chart showing us how the profitability of a company evolved over several years. Although we see steady revenue growth, the cost base fluctuates as a percentage year-on-year, year, resulting in a lower net margin. In the second year of the period under analysis, the net margin percentage increased to 33%, but then it dropped to 27%. We can say that the trend is a decreasing net margin since 2016. When performing historical analysis, past data does not have to solely come from within the organization. Historical data can also be sourced externally. A good example is macroeconomic data, such as the Consumer Confidence Index, interest rates, or any other economic variable that can have a significant impact. A good historical analysis will focus on the value drivers that are typical for the industry or the specific company at hand. We saw earlier for Coca-Cola that this can be sales volume, taxes, and so on. In general, these are cost and profit drivers. For any function, process, project, or team, historical analysis will involve a focus on the operational drivers of performance. What are the advantages when using historical analysis? First, due to its simplicity, historical analysis offers simple explanations and is often used as a foundation for hypothesis generation. The analytical practitioner will describe that due to good weather compared to last year, sales have increased by 10%. This hypothesis implies a connection between good weather and sales will be used for building different scenarios or hypotheses. Another application of historical analysis is benchmarking. It allows us to effectively generate insights when comparing an organization's past performance to that of its competitors over the same time period. Historical data allows a firm to uncover how it fared against competitors. For example, it could show us that sales increased 10% and competitors didn't grow much. With this information, we know that we have increased our market share and have done well from a competitive perspective. And finally, a key benefit of performing historical analysis is that it is widely accepted. It is one of the oldest and most traditional ways to establish useful trends and extrapolate future performance. Many, many times it has been used to surface historic performance gaps requiring further investigation. Historical analysis is rather easy to understand, and another important advantage it has is that data is relatively easy to find. The disadvantages of historical analysis are the lack of predictivity. Bear in mind that past data is not necessarily a good indicator of future performance. Data can be distorted due to extraordinary events. Things that are one-off, such as a merger between two of our competitors, or an event like the Olympic Games taking place in one of our countries of operation, can have a strong impact on numbers and provide an unrepresentative picture. Ultimately, a very important part of mastering historical analysis is delivering the right information to the right people at the right time. This is not an easy task, 
Most organizations generate a large amount of data nowadays. A common challenge of performing effective historical analysis is to manage the trade-off between spending time and resources gathering and transferring data and the actual use of such analysis. Historical analysis is a foundational input to other techniques, such as variance, trend, and comparative analysis. Each organization needs to define its own informational needs. That is, a firm needs to determine what information is to be obtained through historical analysis. Once that's defined, it helps the analytical team source the required data without wasting time on undesired analysis. A useful complement to historical analysis in the descriptive phase is the so-called variance analysis. It refers to the comparison of budget and actual figures. In most companies, variance analysis is performed on particular aspects of operations and their related business drivers. For example, we'll find ourselves perform variance analysis on the number of employees of a company, its key performance indicators, key business indicators, key risk indicators, the company's costs, prices, gross margins, savings, supply chain performance, or other interdependent business variables. In conjunction with other techniques, managers and their teams may use variance analysis to explain why business results or outcomes are different than expectations for an area. Here's an example of variance analysis. You see that revenue is 8% lower than expected, 5% lower versus period, but 14% higher compared to the same period last year. The cost base decreased more than proportionally, resulting in a higher gross profit, 56%, compared to budget, which is 52%, and same period last year, which was 50%. Bottom line, net income increased from 36 million last year to 50.7 million now, improving the net income margin from 21% last year to 26% now and 23% budgeted. Variances are referred to as either favorable when the actual results are better than budget or as unfavorable or adverse when the actual results are worse than budgeted. The metric can be greater than expected, which is favorable for profit and unfavorable for cost. On the other hand, the metric can be less than expected, which is favorable for costs and unfavorable for profit. In its simplest form, variance analysis is applied as an ad hoc exercise where computations are performed to break down a total variance into its component parts. In that case, we want to understand what contributed for the variance of revenues, for example. One way to examine Coca-Cola's revenues would be to perform a variance analysis for the home, cold, and on-the-go channels to see which channel contributed for the aggregate variance the most. Here's another example. We see that the cost base of our logistics department has increased versus last year. To understand what happened, we break down this variance per country, per location, per sub-department. And when we perform the sub-department breakdown, we see a higher than expected and higher than budgeted cost for freight between warehouses. This means that we are moving products across warehouses more frequently compared to the past. And now management needs to understand the reason for this. One possible explanation could be that we did not forecast our sales volume correctly and that the products we sold in this area were not available in that particular warehouse. So we had to move products around between locations in order to deliver the product to the customer in that region. The insight we got from this variance analysis is that our poor sales forecast capabilities resulted in higher logistics costs. In its most complex form, variance analysis, which is one of the most popular tools among management teams, is standardized, automated, and tailored to management needs. Managers and their teams use variance analysis techniques to explain why business results or outcomes in their area differ from expectations. This type of analysis is often applied in conjunction with other techniques. 
The advantage of variance analysis is that it is very simple, widely used, and accepted across the entire organization. It is often applied and paid great attention to when significant variances occur. Some of the disadvantages are that it does not touch the root cause. Variance analysis often falls short of explaining the reason for adverse performance. Also, the information used can be incomplete. Understanding variances cannot be done by looking at numbers. You need to have good business knowledge to understand what you are seeing. You need business intelligence. Modern organizations seek to standardize and automate the production of variance analysis according to common processes, information standards, and systems. During this phase, companies look at the underlying data and try to find anomalies. The data that companies decide to capture and collect is a foundational element for developing analytical capabilities. In the descriptive analytics phase, we see companies introducing standard reports and dashboards and often incorporating exception-based reporting. 